Hey O'Reilly, just here fixing a little bit of an oversight that I discovered in Oh look at all the ores in this room um, That I discovered in the video that I'm doing at the moment um, We're doing a bit of rotary craft But I didn't actually show you how to make the most basic thing Which was the blast furnace, I'd actually done that off camera So we're just going to quickly have a look at how to do that The blast furnace itself This one you make with eight bricks surrounding a piece of redstone um, bricks you know how to make from from normal minecraft so let's just game mode one okay so we're going to need a bucket of lava and we're going to need a blast furnace here we go all right so what you do is, like the, the blast furnace requires a source of heat um, The best source of heat to use for this particular thing is a bucket of lava And then you place the blast furnace on top of it All right. <clears throat> now because you're using lava, be careful you don't put this on a wooden floor or something like that Or the whole place is going to catch fire And what happens is, after the furnace has you know, been sitting on the on the lava for a little while, you can see the heat starting to rise. Um, now it'll need to get up to about f 400, you know, to 600 C in order to start cooking the bits and pieces that you need. But if you give it, you know, sort of five minutes, that'll that'll happen fairly fast. Okay, so sorry about that. I'm I usually try to well, I do try to not have those little you know, sort of little hiccups and, and things like that. Uh, but unfortunately, this there was a bit of an oversight this time. All right, no worries. I'll continue with the episode and we'll we'll get on with some rotary craft. Hey, Riley. Welcome back to another episode. As you can see, I've still got that same stupid steel armor that I found. Still can't remember where I picked that up from. And all of the machines that we had sitting over here are gone. Yeah, I started cleaning up and then I got bored with it. Oh well, these things happen. What can I say? Um, but still, I've managed to organise a reasonable amount of stuff. Went mining, got some loot. Didn't get anywhere near as many dimes as I wanted, so I'm going to have to go back there again at some point. Uh, we are dark outside. And, you know... Stuff is slowly disappearing out of the boxes. You know, it's all good. Alright. So, what we're up to this episode is... Well, the first thing I want to do is get a hold of these conduits. And just sort of do a little bit of basic stuff with my power. All you've got to do is just run them along like that. They automatically join up. We've got two survivors, survivalist generators, which is good. Um, I'll put a third of my charcoal into that one, a third into that one. And then the machines connect along the front. Redstone furnace. I've got a box here that I can put some rubbish in. Uh, and my metallurgic infuser I'll stick over here. All right. So that's going to be in, and yeah. So yeah, you can see, you know, basically how this stuff works. It, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's like a um, an electric cable. Very good. So I am going to now. If I've, I'm starting to get a little low on food, so let's see now, bread. I can make by smelting flour. Applied energistics, nature. Uh... Alright, but no. Okay, I think I can. I think I can pulverize it. Yeah, I can. And then that gets turned into bread. Alright, so all of this can bake up. And we get a bunch of bread. Good stuff. What can I turn that into? Honey slice. I need honey drops. 
mushrooms, yeast for lager, a cutting board and some, you know, yeah, I'm not quite at the point of making this sort of thing yet. But we'll get around to making all of this sort of stuff. Apple jelly, yummy. Toast. Oh, look at that. Burgers. A McPam. Fabulous. Anyway. Uh, getting myself sidetracked here as per usual. Actually, we won't put that there. I'll just stick it in the box here at the moment. Along with my signs. Storage. Yep, still got to do storage. Okay. So what we're doing today is... You know, we've uh, we've got ore doubling through the pulverizer and the redstone furnace, right? But, like I said, there's even better ways of doing things. So a grindstone, I've got a 90% chance of getting a second one. Smelting, I get one. A macerator from IC2, I'll get two. Uh, enrichment chamber, I don't have yet. But that'll give me two. Purification chamber, three, four. <coughs> okay. Extractor, we will get, you know, five per, and then we get tungsten flakes, which we'll need in the future. That's a rotary craft machine. The grinder is also a rotary craft machine, and we get three iron flakes for every ore. And then I can smelt that into an ingot. Okay, so, there, so that's something that we're going to aim for today. We're going to aim for... Uh, or tripling, not just doubling. So we'll just ditch all of that sort of stuff. Now, where's my rotary craft book? Okay, here we go. Now if I look down here, you know, you can just sort of flick through all of the pages and all that kind of thing, one after another. Uh, you know, you get the hang of where things are. We're looking for processing, okay? Take some time and just have a look through what all the machines are and all of that kind of thing. Um, processing. The first processing machine we have to make is called a grinder. And it's got a couple of uses. Now we need to make something called HSLA steel. And it says we need 496 watts and 128 newton meters of torque. All right. Here's a little bit of basic stuff for you, okay? Speed in rads times power uh, times torque in newton meters is equal to power in watts. Alright? Hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. Now, the easy thing about this is Whenever you're looking up these numbers in Rotary Craft, they're all multiples of two. So in order to do the maths in this mod, all you have to do is be able to divide by two, okay? Um, so let's just put some stuff up on the back wall here for a moment, all right? So, yeah, I know about storage. Okay, so power in watts is equal to rad times newton meters. W is equal to power, rad is equal to speed, newton meters is equal to torque. Okay? So that's our basic idea. Now for our grinder, let's go and back, go back and have a look at our book. Processing, grinder. Okay, so it's 4096 you know, is equal to 128 times the speed. All right, so let's just have a, a quick look and work out the speed. And it turns out that it's 32, okay? So for the grinder, it has 4096 watts, uh, 128 newton meters is required and 32 rad. Alright, good. Good, 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 good. Okay. 
So what we need to do is we need to find an you know one engine or a combination of engines that can give me these numbers. All right. Let's go and have a look at our engines. Like our basic, our easiest one is a DC electric engine. All right. This produces 256 rads and 1024 watts. One kilowatt is a thousand, you know, basically a thousand watts. Uh, we only get 42, 4 newton meters of torque though. But, you know, so we need, so that's, that's really not going to do it. Um, that's not going to cut it for us. Because in order to convert different speed and different power, this is all going to be a little confusing to begin with. In order to convert different speed and different power, you need to use gearboxes. Okay? And just bear with me on this. You'll get the hang of it as you start seeing a bit more of it and you start working with it. All I want to do is just sort of say, you know, you, you um, match your speeds and torques in order to produce the power level that a machine wants. It's a pretty interesting mod. It takes a little bit to get your head around. Uh, some people don't like this mod because they couldn't be bothered, you know, with that little bit of, of effort that's required. But, you know, I've got faith in you. Mostly because as part of this Let's Play, you're going to end up doing some of this sort of stuff. So, what do we make our... Uh, let's, let's just sort of continue on, on this way. So we've got a wind turbine, which you can put up in the air. Or we've got this steam engine, right? And a few other bits and pieces. Steam engine produces 32 newton meters of torque and f at 512 rads. Now that's way more speed than I need, but 32 is a quarter of the torque that I need. All right. So if I can chain together four of these then you know when you're chaining together engines you add up the torque and they've all going to be running at the same speed but you add up the torque and that's going to give me 128 and a whole pile more power than I, I really need but for the moment without using gearboxes that's going to be the easiest way to go all right I know you're sitting there thinking oh my friggin head so this is what we need. We need to make four steam engines. We need to make one grinder and we need to make some of these shaft junctions which are basically two in and one out and all that kind of thing. We're also going to need a couple of tools and the tools we need are this thing called a angular transducer and a screwdriver. All right. This is some HSLA steel planks and redstone. This one is HSLA stick and a plank. Every, you know, you're going to use lots of something called HSLA steel in this particular mod. Uh, where do we get that? Well, let's see now. I do have some gunpowder. Not much. We'll grab some sand. I'll probably need some more of that. And remember this blast furnace that we started mucking around with? So we put coal in here. I'll just grab nine. This is good. This can smelt nine things at once. Okay, so we put normal coal into here, and you can see it's starting to process. La 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 la. And we get coke coal. Alright. Now the reason why you take the, you know, the little bit of time to do that is because we want to make HSLA steel. This stuff. Now to make this, 
you have a couple of methods, all right? Sand, normal coal, and gunpowder over here, and then you arrange your iron, and it produces HSLO steel. And if you look down the bottom here, you see it's got bonus output, no. But if we use coal coke, the stuff we've just been making, all right? We've got bonus output, yes, and we've got a lot less chance of consuming sand and gunpowder. So we're going to look at this, and that's 3.6, 1.8. So it's like half the chance of actually burning through, you know, our extra resources. We will use a coke every time we do a a smelt, but we probably won't consume these, which is good because I don't have much gunpowder. So we'll put these in. There's our coal coke. We'll grab some iron. And we are going to need more iron. I've got half a stack here. This can go through Mr. Pulverizer. And then into the furnace and then over here. But anyway, what have we got here? Alright, now here's another thing. If, you, if you're doing any steel smelting, you always want to fill up all the slots because if I just put one iron in here, I'm going to use one sand, one coke coal and a chance of sand. But if I put nine in here, it's, it's still the same. So it's like processing the nine times as much for the same resources. So I am just going to fill this up. So we started off with 45 iron. And we'll see how much steel we get. Nine. Yay! How cool is that? Yeah, see, so 26. So we got, okay, so 26 minus 9 is, what is that, 17? Uh, and we used up 9 iron, so that's 8 bonus that, that we got for doing this. The next thing we need, we're going to need to make all of our stuff, right, is we need a special workbench, because you can't make a lot of this stuff in a standard workbench. You can make components, but the final thing, you need a special workbench. And I can't find the damn thing. Where is it? Here we go, work table. So we need crafting table, some bricks, some steel, redstone, and a couple of stone slabs. So let's cook up some stone. One of those. All right, good. And we ended up with a whole stack from 45. So we got 19, extras. And we need this. Three. The redstone goes at the bottom. I need two HSLA steel at the side. And some bricks. And there's our work table. So I'm going to put that here, just so it's next to my furnace, because that's where I'll be working with it. We're cooking iron, good. We've got a whole stack there. Now we need a bit of redstone. So we needed that, that, and this. And I think we need that, and that, and that for our screwdriver. Okay, so the screwdriver lets us change things around, and the transducer lets us see how much power is being used, and, and that kind of thing. Okay, so first up, let's make our, our grinder. 
So you can see it's got to be done in a work table. Whereas this other stuff you can make in a normal crafting table. We need three base panels, which is three steel. We need a gear, and for five steel I get three gears. And we need a saw, which is another gear, plus four more steel. So I will end up using all three gears and then a couple more. Alright, so let us get into making some stuff. So there's my three. I need one of those, and I need two of those. Arrange them in the right spot in the work table. And we've got our grinder. Very cool. Alright, I'm just gonna, because I'm gonna set this up down here. It's gonna take a little bit of room. So I'll just stick this over here, put my grinder in the box. Wonderful. Now I need my four steam engines. There they are. So one of those has got some cobble on the top. Base panels, which is fine. A shaft unit, which is three like that. An impeller, which is a gear arranged like that. And a condenser, which has liquid pipe and some steel, and that's going to give me two. And I'm going to need four of these. Liquid pipe, you have to make in a work table with some glass. So let's get some sand back out of here. Six. We'll cook that up quickly. And we are going to run out of, of steel very, very quickly. So quickly, in fact, that I think I might start cooking some more steel. Five. Come on. Six. So I'll put this in here and we get our. Oh, we only need one lot of that. Because we get so much for it. <coughs> Glass can just go in here. Good. And there's my condensers. So I can start assembling this thing now. Now I need four shafts. And they go here. I need some panels. I need two lots of four. I'm out of gunpowder. Wouldn't you know it, I'm probably going to have to go find gunpowder. That's really annoying. Alright, so I need two impellers, four impellers. There we go. And what was the last thing I needed? Gold. Yep, there we go. Right, one, two, three, four engines. Now, let's put one engine here, one here, one here, and one here, and our grinder. Now you see that's facing the wrong way. Um, if you use your transducer, it'll show you what's happening, right? Green is where power should be coming in. 
red is where power goes out. So these are all lined up right, but this one is not. So I can use my screwdriver to just turn it so it's in the right spot. Okay. <coughs> like I said, just you know, work with me, do the things I'm doing, and it'll all start to make sense. So now I need to hook all these up, all right? And the thing I need to do that is a shaft junction. I actually need ah, so now shaft junction. There we go. So a gear, some some panels, some rods, some steel. Now if you look at the shaft junction, it says it merges engines to combine them, all right? Um, the input speed has to be exactly the same. Now, they're all the same engine, so we don't have any problems with that. Uh, let me see now. I need two lots of those, two lots of those, then we can put that. Do 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 do. All right, two, four. So I've got an extra one, which is fine. Doesn't bother me in the slightest. Now let's have a look and make sure these are doing what I want them to do. So remember, green is input, red is output. So this one's in the right spot. This one, green is input, red is output, so that's right, and that's right. I don't actually have to change anything around, which is lovely. All right, so there is our little rotorcraft engines and all of that kind of stuff. Um, now, steam engines. In order to run a steam engine, you need two things. You need a source of heat below it and water piped into it. Alright. So, we'll take care of... Oh, and if you heat them up with fire, uh, but you don't... Um, you don't have any water in it, and then you pump water into it, you'll get an explosion. <sighs> yeah, let's go on. Let's go and do my favourite little rotary craft demonstration. Alright. Let's head off to, uh, let's go into creative, and we'll go to the desert. Alright, so I want a coil. Let's see now. now you see there's two, two different sizes of coils. One of them is creative, one of them is not. Uh, where we're we gonna go. Let's go all the way over here, away from anything I might actually want. Yeah, this looks like a good spot. Okay, redstone. A lever. All right. So coils—they're sort of like stored energy. All right, and you you charge them up. Um, you can also tell it how much speed and torque you want output. So I'm going to put in 4096. Actually, I can I can do a lot better than that. Three six six five five three six as an output. All right. Now that's going to reach the limit of this very, very quickly, okay? So what's going to happen is this is going to overcharge this coil, okay? When I turn this on. Did you see the size of that explosion? Better than dynamite. 
All right, let's go home. Now the whole point of doing that was not so much to, as to scare you. It's just a sort of, sort of to say, you know, if you if you don't do things properly, you know, you can end up with explosions. Like one of these going would probably take out a reasonable amount of this room, which I don't want. So the first thing we want to do before we um, before we start heating these things up is we want to take care of the water supply. Water supply. I have got some conduits in a box. Here we go. Is that enough conduit? Do 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 do. Okay. That kind of works. And then I need something in here which is going to supply water to all of these pipes. And something that we can use is from Ender IO, and it's called a reservoir. This thing. This thing is, is freaking awesome. So we need glass, fused quartz, which is from nether quartz, and a cauldron. So let's go and uh, see how much iron we've got left. We're going to need 16 nether quartz. We need sand. I only need 9 because if you remember from earlier, I, I baked 3. So that's there. We need 2 cauldrons. And we need to cook and nether quartz. Good, there's our 12 glass. We're almost finished. Good. And then that goes top and bottom. And we get four pieces of this reservoir. Now the cool thing about this is, right, I'll arrange it in a square, and you can see it's all joined together. Okay. I'm going to put one bucket of water in it, go and get another one. And it automatically fills up. Basically what you've got there is it's an infinite water source, so I can take a bucket of water out, and it refills itself gets even better. You know, so it's it's like having a couple of source blocks with a space in between. It's just, you know, like my little thing outside. It's an infinite water source in a nice little container that you can set up anywhere and stuff like that. But, like I said, it gets even better. Now, with my conduits, I could set them to be extract and all that kind of thing, like I did with the lava. Or, what I can do is just tap this, right-click it with a wrench. And can you see how it's now got this little arrow? What that means is that it's automatically outputting water. So this little tank here, this little 2x2 two two tank, automatically keeps itself full and keeps water flowing out. So there's our, our little water gauge. Isn't that just brilliant? I think that's fantastic. So I'll give that a little while. That's going to give us our, um, you know, our water for our steam engines. And then, when I come back, we can worry about how do we heat them up. Because remember, too much heat, and you're going to get an explosion. But that's okay. I've got a really good way of doing it. Alright, I'm back. Um, our steam engines are nicely full of water. So, now we need to worry about how do we heat them up. And we've got to heat them up from underneath. Oh, copper. Okay, so there's the bottom of our steam engines, alright? 
I'm just going to collect the copper because I can. Because it's here. And so am I. Well, what we can do is we can get some netherrack. Which I collected earlier. This is the reason why I wanted the netherrack. Put the copper in here. Alright. All good. Where's my little sparky? Not here. I've really got to move all this inside so I don't have to keep running outside to find stuff. Where did I put it? Not there. Not there. Not there. Not there. Where's my fucking igniter? Not there. No. 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 In the last bloody chest I look in. Alright. So I'm going to light all this netherrack. Good. Fill up the space. And what happens now is the temperature starts to rise. You can see it on the little chart here. And when it's high enough, it's going to produce some. Um, it's going to produce steam. But there is one downside with these machines. They make a bit of noise. So what we can make is if we get a, a muff, um, a note block. and we surround the note block with wool, we get a sound muffler. And we'll just see how we go on here. Getting there. Pretty soon this will start producing power. And we'll see everything start to turn. Come on. There we go. And you can hear the noise. You hear the difference? So, use sound mufflers when you're using rotary craft machines. But, there you go. And our grinder is turning and it says we've got enough power, speed and torque. So we're all good. So now, if we get, say, some iron, we put it in here, it'll start to run, boom ba boom ba boom ba boom ba boom, there it is, three iron flakes for an ore, lovely. Now, you ought to be really cool, oh, and the other thing is, um, the canola that I've been growing. The reason for that is because if we go and find our bulk, miscellaneous, lubricant. Gearboxes need lubricant, all right? Put canola seeds in the grinder and you you get lubricant oil out of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's why there's a, uh, a little lubricant bar here, because we can also feed canola into this, and we get lubricant out of it. So, good, grinder, wonderful, all good. But I'm sort of thinking, you know, it would be a lot easier if I could just set up a couple of chests, um, like an input chest and an output chest, so I could feed ores or whatever into this, and get the output out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a couple of chests. Um, uh, three, four. 
and I'm going to make an iron chest and a gold chest. Gold for the output because I'll need to have more more capacity. Wonderful. So this is going to be my in and this is going to be my out. Uh, the other thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need somewhere for lubricant to go because I'm going to be, you know, sort of making that. So I'm going to need a tank. I've got tanks in here. Yep, there we go. Three tanks. And I'll put these here. I don't need lava. Uh, right, now I need a way to get lubricant out of here and to get items in and out of here, alright? So, Let's move this around a little bit. We're going to put the the output one here and the input one here. So we're probably going to need some more of that fluid conduit stuff, which I'm out of. So I'll grab 12 of this. And away it cooks. But let's have a look at what other conduits we can have. Well, what do you know? We have an item conduit, which moves items around. Now that needs pulsating iron nuggets, and I might get them from pulsating iron. And this is one iron and one ender pearl in the alloy smelter as well. So let's just grab a piece of iron, grab an ender pearl. We'll go back inside and we'll make some more stuff. Oh, our bread's finished, which is nice. I'll come and grab that a bit later. You can see it's almost processed all of that, which is really good. La 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 la, la 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 la, you finished. Alright, so I've got fused quartz. And I'll put another two along here. Because I'll need it for the, the item conduit. And we say here, we want to extract and insert into that. So when we're making lubricant, it can go into there. Let's just grab a stack of seeds and I'll drop them in here. And you see it starts to process. Cook my iron. Processes. La 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 la. And we've got lubricant which is great we've also got these canola seed husks right? canola seed husks you can centrifuge it to get more lubricant out of it but for the moment I couldn't be bothered with that um, all I want to do is just stick them in the bin And here's a trash can I prepared earlier. And 
and we'll put him over here. Pulsating iron, there's our nuggets. And we've got some item conduits. Wonderful. Now the good thing about Ender IO conduits and stuff is that I can have both item and liquid and energy and everything else in the one spot. So, this is our input chest, okay? We want to extract automatically and items we want to insert. So we actually want in and out. Now you can see that this is color coded green. You can have up to 16, there's 16 different channels. So you can do different things with the one piece of conduit. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. All right. So we're going to insert green and then we want to extract on a new channel. We'll call that brown. And we want to insert this one on brown. So there's our canola seed husks. We don't want that though. We want them to go into the bin. But the problem is, right, how does my conduits work out to send canola husks here and everything other than canola husks over here? Well, that's pretty easy. Let's go and have a look at conduit again. And you can see we can get an item filter, all right? which is a hopper and four pieces of paper. Paper, you make it the same way you always do. Alright. One, two, three, four. And somewhere around here, probably in this box, is a hopper. Good. And we've got our item filter. Good stuff. Now, see this little thing that looks like an item filter? This hole? That's exactly what it's for. Alright? And we say, we, we'll get to all of this sort of stuff later on. And we say we only want canola seeds. Alright? But, once again, how do we know we're going to... Yeah, we've got to absolutely make sure that our canola husks end up going here instead of over here all right and that's what this priority is for okay it will try the conduit will try and put things into the highest priority before the lowest priority do you know what i mean it works down in order from highest to lowest so if i set this to 1 all right and then this brown one is 0 what it means is that when it extracts stuff out of the grinder, it will try and put stuff into here first. But we've got a filter, so it can only put canola seed husks into here. Anything else, it can't put into there, and it's then going to come out to this, this zero priority area and into my output chest. Okay, so I'll just ditch this. <laughs> Once again, this probably sounds a little confusing, but trust me, you do it a couple of times and you'll get the hang of it really, really fast. So we've got the canola there. So now, if I say, get a bit more iron. Right, I'll take that out. And it's starting to process the iron. We'll just wait for that. Now it produces the iron flakes, there you go, they get extracted, they can't be put in the trash can because only husks can go in the trash can, so it comes down here to priority zero and puts them in the chest. So there you go, a nice little setup that will produce oil, get rid of the garbage, and give us our our three times ore. So copper, we're just going to process a whole pile of this stuff. 
we might as well process the yellow right the ferrous osmium will process nickel I'm not going to process uranium I've got another thing in mind for that same with cinnabar and shiny and bauxite I'll leave alone as well all the rest of it we can stick all of our ores in here along with our canola and it's going to just slowly work its way through the whole chest grinding everything up the next thing in is the canola and you get the idea it's going to gradually work its way through the entire chest it's going to process all the stuff into flakes ditch the um, the husks and put lubricant in the tank and because it's a it's running off fire from the nether rack which is never going to go out and water from the reservoir here which is never going to run out this is free or tripling we never have to supply any kind of power or any kind of resources we just put our stuff in and away it goes forever I love it okay I've had to go and uh, you know look after my, my little girl that's why I was away for a little bit but um, I think we're gonna call it a day we're gonna call it an episode because we've covered a lot of stuff today some of which probably won't be making much sense but if you just do this if you run into any problems give me your, oh incidentally don't stand on the grinder it hurts um, see oh that helps all right see ouch um, just make this setup you know if you have to watch the video a couple of times in order to get it right or drop me an email or something like that if things aren't working properly and I'll uh, I'll walk walk you through it and we covered item conduits and channels and filters and priorities and all of that kind of stuff today uh, that's that's a fair amount um, and it's a fair amount to absorb so just do what do what I did here all right make yourself a little setup like this you know with the nether rack and the the steam engines and all that kind of thing don't forget the sound muffler and have a go at getting the uh, the conduits right okay and that should do it for today um, if you want me to cover things like the the conduits in, in more depth and just set up a whole pile of examples um, I can do that. I'm quite happy to. So we, we're getting a good amount of. The, we've got 16 buckets, 17 buckets, 17 and a half buckets of lubricant, yeah, which is which is really good. And canola. I mean, seriously, my far my thing has grown again. It's all full. All right. So let's just see how much canola I get from harvesting this little area. and I'll replant and then we'll look at how much is left over you'll be amazed actually I'm not going to replant because I don't think I need this again I've just picked up 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 almost 14 stacks of canola just from harvesting that 9 by 9 little farm and that is going to be more than enough I will never need to harvest canola ever again like seriously if I if I process all of this I'm probably not going to need to to do any more <coughs> anyway I'm gonna call it quits there end of an episode and like I said if you need me to you know set up a whole bunch of examples about this you know sort of item conduit and how it how the different channels work and stuff like that see extracting from from here on green inserting green into here extracting brown brown goes into there brown goes into there item filter on this one and a higher priority anyway let me know if you need more or if you need something explained better um, and we'll get into it the rotary craft stuff 
This will at least get you started with some of the ideas. Don't worry if you don't completely understand it yet because when we start making more advanced machines and we start you know, having to use gearboxes and things like that, it's a lot easier to understand once you do. Alright, that's it for today. I'll catch you later.